Hello. <laughs> Welcome to another episode. Episode three. Oh my god, we made it. <laughs> um, Welcome to another episode of this visual podcast that I'm doing, um, where I talk a lot about my struggles with anxiety, depression, self-loathing, fear of failure, and all sorts of other things, um, particularly with how it relates to me being an artist. Um, So this episode, I'm super excited to talk about art style. Yeah, because... I just think it's like one of those things that it's just like it's so important in our community right like I feel like it's one of the top art topics that comes up a lot Um, and if you ask like any professional you know how do you find your art style or like what do you do and all this kind of stuff like nine out of ten times most of them will say don't worry about it like just draw a lot it will come out no matter what or you know just yeah that's don't if you focus on it it means it's like not good like you need to focus more on the foundations of art all that kind of stuff and you know what I've never been able to take that advice I just couldn't stop worrying about it it's something that I thought about all the time and of course like I'm not great yet but I am learning to manage my mind a bit better Um, now but in the past I had no concept of managing my mind so there was no way for me to know how to not worry about something like art style Um, and I don't think it's one of those topics that are ever gonna go away and so and I think it's fun I love thinking about art style too when there's not a lot of stress around it but um, I thought it would be cool to kind of um, tell you guys like my story behind all the things that is related to art style for me and kind of like how I struggled with it a lot and um, how I might not be struggling with it so much right now. I hope I'm not jinxing it, but I really don't think I am. Uh, So when I was a a wee lad (laughs) um, and I uh, was starting drawing um, as a kid, like I didn't really have a style I don't think many kids did I'm not I'm not sure what you would call it I guess it was a little bit anime just a little bit like inspired by it because you know and that's how many people get inspired by drawing as they see their favorite tv show and at least from what I saw a lot online like anime was probably the big thing to be inspired by there was a little bit of that but I think I was mostly inspired by Tim Burton Um, I really, really loved Nightmare for Christmas and all that stuff, like, and a lot of the subjects that I drew were quite, like, dark, and I had a goth phase and all that stuff when I was, um, in middle school, and yeah, that's a topic for another podcast, but, uh, I, I had, like, just some really scratchy kind of, like, Tim Burton kind of style, and, um, yeah, I just liked it. I don't know why. Just was insp- inspired by that. Uh, and then I went to school. I went to art school and at a school called DigiPen Institute of Technology in Redmond, Washington in the United States. And this is not, um, this is very typical of most art schools, but pretty much, you know, schools will say, you better not fucking draw with an anime style in my classroom. Like, that's what, like, most teachers will say, is you better not have a style. But, I mean, anime did get pointed out specifically uh, a lot of the times. And it was kind of like a pastime for many students to make fun of of the anime style. And, um, it, I, I, like, I remember, okay, I remember this... Like, I think it was one of the first days of school. It was, like, orientation day. And there was this girl who brought in, like, a magazine where her artwork was um, uh, published or, like, she got featured in this magazine. If you guys know Imagine FX, it's kind of like that, but I think it was smaller and it was, like, really specific, again, to, like, anime work, anime-inspired work. And... Um, she was clearly very talented, very talented, 
person. And it was first day of orientation and I totally had my guard up. Like I saw this girl who was talented. She had her work published and, um, and you know, I had, I again, didn't know how to manage my mind back then a lot more. And I like saw it as a threat for sure. I was kind of like, Ooh, shit. Like if she's talented, that must mean I'm not talented. And if I could go back or if I experienced that again, I w- would practice. I would like to practice thinking differently and instead thinking, um, oh, wow, this person's talented. That means I could learn a lot from them rather than seeing it as like, like um, a detriment to my self-worth as an artist. But anyway, so then when we went to class and one of the first teachers who was t- telling us about no styles allowed kind of thing, um, And when they called out anime, it totally made me feel good. It made me feel like, oh, okay, so this girl is defective. Like, she has an anime style and I don't. Or, you know, I had that kind of feeling of like, oh, thank God. Like, um, there's something wrong with that. So that means I can still be uh, validated, I guess. And which is so silly, really, because she was a really talented person and I could have learned a lot from her or just... I could have learned from a lot more people, I think, back in the day before I was just, like, really, yeah, just, you know, judgmental, I guess, to make myself feel better. Uh, but anyway, you know, when when schools tell you that, I'm not trying to vilify the school at all, because, again, this is really typical of art school, where they tell you, like, you really need to, like, not draw in an anime style when you're, like, doing a photo study or something. I mean, again, it depends, but what they're just trying to do is they're trying to build the foundation of your like drawing capabilities. So they want you to learn to draw an eye accurately and realistically so that in the future you can then make your own decisions of how you want to break those rules. And um, this is totally depends up to you. I mean like there's I've heard of teachers who said like they think that that rule of like you need to learn the foundations first before you can like break the rules they think it's bullshit whereas I've heard other teachers who say like you know you should I really think it depends on what you want and where you want to go so for example if you want to be like a um character artist as in like someone who concepts characters for like a game like Halo right uh you're probably going to need to learn the foundations because you're going to have to learn how to do things in perspective accurately. You're going to have to really learn how the like, the human face structure really looks like um, so that then you can draw a soldier something accurately. But then at the same time, like you need to know the rules of a human form so that then you can break them and then create like alien characters that feel believable in... A Halo game. I don't know much about Halo. That could have been like so off brand or whatever, but you know what I mean. Whereas, let's say you wanted to be like an editorial artist, which means like somebody who makes like um, stuff in, uh, you make, sorry, what do you call it? Like images for magazines. And a lot of those magazine images that I remember seeing, it's very abstract. It's really weird. Like you can go pretty far off. And I have no idea what the background is for those artists, right? Like those artists could have been like, uh, fuck everything. I'm just going to draw what I want. And someone decided, yeah, I like what you're doing. So it really depends. I don't think one way is right or the other at all. And, um, I'm sure there's plenty of successful people who went either route, you know? Um, uh, So I didn't have a style, right, when I went to school because that's what the teacher told me to do. And I really, really worked on realism, I guess, like sort of. Like I, I really tried to copy whatever was right in front of me and we would do a lot of either figure drawing or... um, Uh, life studies, all that kind of stuff. And I just tried to make the best looking image that looked as accurate as possible. Um, And then during my free time, I actually remember myself doing a lot of studies too. Like I didn't do that much personal work like imaginatively. If I did, 
it would be stuff that I think because at that time I was going for being like a video game artist I didn't really know how I would fit yet but I just knew I wanted to be a part of video games I mean I was super into World of Warcraft and um a lot of games right like but yeah I was super into World of Warcraft so I think I did a lot of like fantasy style drawings um yeah just like elves and shit like that and then um so I wasn't really exploring my personal style I was just kind of like doing assignments and practicing to get good at seeing what I was like drawing what I was seeing accurately um and personally I'm very thankful for that like it really built my foundation um like you definitely get good at drawing when you when you draw like thousands I mean I must have done like thousands of figure drawing you know and um over the four years that I was there and and we like I, or in our first year of school it was like you just drew shapes you know he would uh, our teacher would have boxes and rectangles and cones and spheres in like a you know in a right in, in the middle of the room and we had to draw that accurately and yeah again like I said I'm I'm very like thankful for that because I feel quite like it it gave me a foundation to to be confident off of um and and I I like things having like clearly like some foundation to it I don't know anyway but but there are again like I said there are plenty of artists who are successful without having to go to school and without like um like having a, a base foundation and like some of the people and and people who had like a clear style all throughout their career and three artists come up in my head because I was listening to some podcast episodes and a podcast called the art side of life have you guys ever heard of that it's super good I'll link it down below and um I listened to an interview by Loish oh actually she didn't mention it in the episode in art side of life I heard another interview but she did talk about how like um when she went to school her her professors openly did not like her work um they thought they thought it was like shallow or I don't know, just like they openly did not like her style, right? And um, look at her now. <laughs> She's one of the most popular artists ever, like in our, in on, online. And, um, and she said how like the people would contact her for that work. She's not doing and using much of what she did in university for her current career, so. There's that. Another artist that I think of is um, Cosmic Spectrum. Cosmic Spectrum, Yana Bogac. She also, t one of her advice on that podcast was saying how like, you know, like there's gonna be, there's gonna be professors who won't like your work, you know, in the way that you do it. And, um, um, but if you, if it feels like you and it feels right, like don't listen to them. And um, I can imagine like what she what she was kind of thinking and how she was going through it. And then finally, there's another artist called Lord Gree. I think that's how you say it, Lord Gris or Lord Gree. I'll link their you know Instagram pages and all that stuff as well as um, the podcast episodes. And she actually dropped out of art school because there was a teacher that yelled at her, saying like, um, "You." you're never going to be creative, you can't do shit and stuff. And she dropped out of school, art school. And personally, for me, all three of those artists are successful in my book. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's plenty of ways to find success, I think. But um, I, though, got, like, this notion in my head that you really shouldn't have a style right like I it really internalized that and kind of shamed myself into like being this great or like not great but just like this ideal artist of not having a style can do anything that kind of thing um, and then but of course as school went on you kind of have to start putting a portfolio together for applying to companies and when you're applying to companies like one of the biggest 
things that they advise you to do is to have a, a portfolio that looks like it would really fit well into that company or like the game or their yeah that company style in general I think it should have been totally the other way around I think they should have maybe done something more like kind of figure out what you love figure out what you're really into and then find companies that that fit that rather than the other way around and um because I kind of just bounced around a lot you know like there's video game art which is uh I mean I don't really know how to describe it but I guess it's a lot more serious it totally depends on the game obviously right like different companies have very different styles like Crash Bandicoot looks very very different than Halo right and so um I knew I didn't want to do super realistic stuff like Halo but I did dabble in that because I was like, man, like, do I want to, what do I want to do? And then um, the other option that I was thinking was animation. So like, um, you know, like Disney, that kind of thing and getting and getting um, my work to look more cartoony. I, I did at one point, though, kind of realize, OK, I knew I didn't want to do super crazy realistic. I don't think that's that fun. I want to do um, more um, stylized stuff so like yeah Disney or or some more stylized games and this is also when Frozen came out and um, Brittany Lee she's an artist that was kind of famous because of Frozen like she her style or her her work really and she became like a, a household name I guess for artists um, for, for entertainment artists, I mean, um, when Frozen came out. Her work is amazing. It's really, really beautiful. And it's very Disney, very, very Disney. And, um, you know, found her work and I was like, okay, maybe I do want to go more the animation route. Maybe video games is too serious. I don't know. My head was everywhere. So I, like, started putting together a portfolio like that and did work that was more in that style. And then also I discovered Anna Katish. And when I saw Anna Katish's work, I will also link her, I was totally blown away. I just thought her work was so amazing. Like, I thought it was so appealing, so fun to look at. It was just, yeah, it was just, I just really liked it. There was so much appeal and character in her work. And I was like, I went from, like, maybe drawing like once a week in my sketchbook maybe or like maybe not even I was focused more on assignments to drawing like maybe like at least every day I would fill a fill a page in a sketchbook because I was so inspired by her work I loved it so much and I emulated her work in my sketchbook I was just like I mean if you look at if you scroll through my Instagram seriously my it's I'm all over the place like <laughs> it's like I I really tried all sorts of shit and and so but behind Anna's work like as I was doing it and like learning I wasn't really thinking of learning I was thinking more like I love her work so much and I had this kind of like desperate needy kind of frustrated feeling inside where it was like I didn't just love her work I was just I was like I wish I was the person who thought of this style. Like, I wish I was the person who had this style. Like, it wasn't just like a admiration. It was like, it was like this need. It was not, it was not a good feeling. But it was great because for like a year, almost, I was so inspired by her work and I drew so much and it was like a really awesome time. It was pretty much my senior year of school. And at the same time, I was, um, I was going to a lot of figure drawing, so I, and I, I was taking a lot less classes in my last semester, so I had a lot more free time to kind of just do what I wanted, and that was a really good year. I feel like I actually learned so much more during that semester than on some of the semesters where I took way too many classes and, like, was working ridiculous hours. Um, it really shows how rest is really important, I think, when it comes to learning. But anyway, so I, um... Yeah, I was just crazy inspired by her work. I was like wishing I was her so badly. And then this was also when I started my YouTube channel around the same time. 
all of this happening. I was all over the place. <laughs> and um, as my work, like, clearly became more and more like Anna Katish's work, I think there was maybe, like, two people, seriously. Like, two people out of hundreds of people being like, oh, I love your work, you know? Two people said, like, oh, wow, I love your work. It really it reminds me of this other artist, Anna Katish's work. And, like... It's funny how these people have no idea, like, what happened because of that little comment. But that completely destroyed me. Just, I was in so much shame. Oh, my God. I really took it hard. And, of course, it's not their fault. Oh, I hope you guys don't think of that at all. It's all me, right? It's all the drama inside my head. And I was just like, you are an imposter, you are, you have no voice, you're a copycat, you're a piece of shit, all that stuff. <laughs> and so my first hiatus with YouTube, it had a lot to do with that. I mean, there was a lot of other things involved, like um, my move to California for the Disney internship, and then, you know, I was, you know, I was breaking up with my boyfriend at that time. It was all... It all kind of related, but also the shame that I had just about who I was as an artist. Yeah, there was no way I could produce content. Like, impossible. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's actually the real story as to why I stopped for that first time. Um, anyway, so, um, you know, like currently my professional work, um, it doesn't really feel like me like it's really it is good work I think if I look at it objectively I think it's good work like the the, the portfolio that I have right now that I use to apply for freelance jobs and things like that and the same portfolio that I use to get the Disney internship um, it's it's good work it just really yeah it really doesn't feel like me it's it was me it was me calculating what what would get me an A in the in the class and then also what would get me a job and um, it did those things which is good and um, it's still doing that which is good but it is um, I am kind of in that weird zone right now where I would like to change my professional portfolio so that I can get jobs that I would prefer to have you know and um, yeah so since doing this work and what i mean by this work it's like all of this self-reflection all of this like personal development and like hiring a life coach and just all, all journaling you know like just so much reading about shit like since i've been doing this work i finally like let myself um really be honest with what it is that i want in my art career and which also has to do with my style and that's um I honestly what I really want is what a lot of artists who are who are well known online have like Loish or Sakimi-chan or um, you know the big names and what they have is they have a very distinctive style that um, that people like go to them specifically for their style um, and of course, they've taken years and years to develop it. So I know I'm not anywhere near that right now. Like I'm, um, I'm just kind of getting shit together. I know I'll have to rely on my professional work for a while. But anyway, um, like I was thinking about it because um, when I was a kid, what blew my mind was the stuff that I saw on DeviantArt. Like, that stuff <laughs> blew me away. And I was reading a blog post, like, a long time ago when I was stalking Brittany Lee, but I was reading, like, one of her posts about how she said that, like, you know, she was absolutely blown away when she saw The Little Mermaid. And, um, which kind of makes sense, right? Like, like where she is now being one of the lead visual development artists at Disney. Um, I believe that story, right? Like, I really believe it. And I guess I think I was, on, when I was putting together my portfolio in school, I was kind of like, 
I yeah, I was. I guess I was trying to do what she was doing without the like, like passion really behind it, um, because I wasn't obsessed with Disney when I was a kid. Sure, of course I enjoyed the movies, but I wasn't obsessed with it. And then same with video games. Like I wanted to be a video game artist, but like I was obsessed with playing it, but I wasn't like blown away by the art. And when I think about what blew me away as a kid and what I what really propelled me to want to be an artist, it was it was the stuff that I saw on on Deviant Art. Like it was Loish's work, Sakimi Chan's work, um, Yume. Um, I mean, there's so there was a ton, right? Like. And I loved the diversity of it. I loved how there were so many different, like, styles and stuff. But anyway, like, um, yeah, so that just, that kind of makes a lot of sense for me. Why then I want what I want. And for a long time, I really shamed myself for wanting that. Like, I really thought, like, no. <laughs> to be a good artist or to be an ideal artist is to mold yourself or to be someone without a style and be hireable um, with a company with a prestigious company like Disney or like um, you know like Naughty Dog um, um, 343 which is the Halo people um, yeah so I for a long time I guess I was trying to put myself in like a box and so with that in mind and this is the kind of stuff, guys, that I work on every day when I journal or when I read, you know, like these are the journal questions that I ask myself. Um, for example, one of the things that I learned with Law of Attraction. So, OK, I have this goal, right, that I want to find my art style that that people come to me for. So with the combination of things I learned, one of the things from Law of Attraction is this concept of act as if. So pretty much if what Loish and Sakimi-chan, if like what they have and is what I want, then I need to act as if I was them. And, um, and, and think as if I was them. And so I really thought about it like, okay, so Loish has this style, right? And it's really beautiful and like people, you know, are after it. Um, what is she thinking? Like, what does she think about it? How does she act day to day? And what does she think before she like, you know, goes on that blank canvas and starts to draw something? And what I concluded to, and this is the question I asked myself, what would Loish think about or like what well, I forgot what the question is but this is one of those things and I concluded that some of one something that she would probably think not deliberately but like she it's kind of like subconscious is that she already has a style like it's just this natural thing that she just she already has one um and and she's probably quite relaxed about it like it's not this big deal and I think that's what many like professional artists who say like don't worry about it I think this is what they kind of mean about like you'll find your style by relaxing by not being needy and desperate about it and um so yeah she would think I already have a style and um another thing that I learned also from the law of attraction type concept is that and something I work on is like I don't want to criticize people for having something that I want and I did a lot of that like throughout school and throughout when I was working um I did a lot of that like I would criticize my pr pretty much my hero like <laughs> which is Loish and a lot of the people in DeviantArt like I would I would criticize the fact that, oh, she's just drawing a lot of girls, like, no wonder it's easy, or like, oh, she she's using colors that are obviously, of course, those are fun, like, but they're not realistic. Like, I would criticize that stuff in my own head. Excuse me. In my own head, I don't say it out loud, but that, that would be how I would hold myself back from doing things that I actually really enjoyed 
it was like my excuse for why I wasn't successful or why I wasn't having a good time. I would criticize people, other artists like popularity and try to make it seem like, oh, well, they got there because they did, they took the easy way out, you know, like, you know, they did stuff that was fun while I'm over here trying to like do shit that's really hard. Um, and that makes me better or whatever, you know, but of course, you know, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm really working on that. I'm really, like, I, okay, I don't even have to work on it anymore. I just don't, I don't criticize it at all anymore. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, good for her, right? Like, good for anyone who gets to do whatever the fuck they want to do every day. And, and they're enjoying it. They're like, that's what they get to do. Like, good for fucking them. There's no rules you need to follow. There's nothing that you have to, like, stick by. Like, there's nobody who, des- like, deserves or don't deserve their success, whatever, right? Like, it's, it's, um, it's cool. I actually really think it's cool now. And um, another thing, I talked about money last last um, last episode, but money, that's definitely something I'm not criticizing people anymore for. Like, if someone's got money for, for, some of us will think like, oh, they got money just because they drew a lot of girls or they keep, you know, there's some artists who are famous, right, for having, the, and then they're, they have the same face syndrome, quote unquote. Um, fuck off it doesn't matter like they they it's yeah anyway you know what i'm saying but i'm not gonna criticize people anymore for having something that i want because i think in the moment it makes me feel better so as a result from all of this i um i've really been working on adopting that feeling of like i already have a style like whatever comes out of my hands no matter what it is, I'm not gonna like calculate. I'm not gonna budge things so it looks more different or more the same as an artist that I really admire. I'm not gonna, um, um, if I wanna f- draw a fucking girl, I'm gonna draw a girl. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've just been like, it's just my style. Whatever comes out, I'll just, I'll, we'll see. And there's room for growth. It could change and I can relax about it, you know? And um, and honestly, with what you're seeing right now, which is me doing studies of photos just that I found on Pinterest, um, I haven't had so much fun drawing in a long time. Like, yeah, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Whew. It's kind of, yeah, it's really crazy feeling because I've just had this like desperate and like needy feeling around this topic for so long and it just feels really nice to just let go a little bit and really enjoy myself and kind of just believe like, yeah, this is it. This is my thing and I'm really enjoying it. So we'll see where it goes. I hope. I know I'll grow. I know I might change from this, but I'm just saying that like I had a lot of fun during this during this thing. So if you guys are, you know, um, like worried about that, just think you already got one. You already have a style. You might not recognize it, but you already have one. Um, And just let yourself relax into it a little bit. yeah, because, you know, when I say, like, I already have a style, what it makes me feel is totally relaxed. It makes me feel a little bit confident, too. But, like, mostly it makes me feel very relaxed. So my actions um, my actions are, yeah, like I said, I don't calculate. I don't, I don't work. Um, I just draw freely. And the result is that I have a style, right? Like, yeah, good stuff. Anyway, <laughs> I think that's everything for now. Thank you for everyone who, again, commented in the last episode. I always, always, always love reading it. I'm sorry if I haven't gotten to some of you who commented. I haven't been able to reply to everyone, um, but I will. I, I will. You know, I'll make sure everyone gets a little response. And um, also, there was a few people who were quite interested in the Facebook group idea. Uh Some people mention Discord instead of Facebook. I'm going to have to do a little research to make sure I can handle it. And then um, I just don't know anything about Discord, but I've heard a lot about it. So we'll see. 
And I'll probably put out a survey. It's probably what I'll do at some point on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's everything. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya.